Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is uh, another uh, episode of my vlog. I'm recording one of the Muslim Student Association of Ohio University uh, series of multicultural uh, discussion about uh, Islam. And in this episode, I record uh, the topic about Islam in America with the presenters uh, Dr. Howard it's one of the uh, senior lecturer of Ohio University he has specialist in Islam in Africa but today he will share with us about the interesting uh, fact and uh, some important points about the progress and the development of Islam in America so enjoy it and subscribe, like, and comment to this blog channel. Thank you. In the United States and its history. So, um, my first um, slide here, he is, uh, his name is Yaro Mahmoud, and um, people think that this is actually the, um, the first painting of a Muslim in the United States. Um, he came to the U.S. as a slave from Guinea in West Africa. And um, so I thought it was, um, when I came across this picture, I was kind of amazed that we have some sort of record of, um, of Muslims being um, present in the U.S. Uh, that far back in time. This is even a little more startling, and I'll play this for you, and you can all let me know what it sounds like. Hope that people are in here. It sounds like the azan. It sounds like the call to prayer. So this is kind of fascinating that Alan Lomax, who was a well-known collector of um, folk songs in the American South um, in the early part of the 20th century, he came across um, this, um, what was a prison song, which had been a, a slave song, um, so uh, here's a contemporary breakdown of the percentages of where do Muslims in the USA come from. Um, the biggest percent currently is from South Asia and then Arab Americans, African Americans, and then other would be, would include Southeast Asians and, um, uh, and native born Americans and, or, or white Americans, I should say, or non uh, African Americans. So, so there's about, um, it's about 1% of the population in this country, um, but it is the, the, they say it's the fastest growing religion in the US and the, the third uh, largest after uh, Christianity and Judaism. Primarily, uh, Islam in the U.S. is an, an urban phenomenon. So, um, one thing that I've focused on here is some uh, well-known Muslim American personalities, and I'll start with Malcolm X. Malcolm X uh, got his start as, uh, as, as a Muslim in, in prison, joining uh, the Nation of Islam. And he became a leading spokesperson uh, for the Nation of Islam with a very, very fiery speeches, and he was an important part of recruiting people to the uh, Nation of Islam, which was a, um, a black nationalist uh, organization founded in 1930 uh, and had been attracting particularly urban African Americans uh, since that time. Um, so after his trip to uh, Mecca and to um, Egypt, um, he came back and founded the organization 
for African American unity, um, kind of based on along the lines of the OAU, the Organization of African Unity, uh, which was an early attempt to pull together all the nations of Africa uh, into a, a political and economic kind of force. And his organization had that theme as well, which, uh, which is also, uh, it was a very important part of the Nation of Islam, which had a, uh, a strong economic impact in some uh, African American communities with uh, shops and, and restaurants and uh, production of food products and, and some other factories. The, uh, the Nation of Islam actually was a wealthy organization. Um, then my, my next personality, who I'm guessing you all know about, is Muhammad Ali, who was born as Cassius Clay. And, and one of the themes um, I have to some extent in this presentation is uh, Americans who became Muslim through conversion, uh, which is about half, about 50% of, um, of American Muslims are converts to Islam. Uh, boxing champion Muhammad Ali refused to be inducted into the U.S. Army and is immediately stripped of his heavyweight title. This was during the Vietnam War. He was drafted to go to Vietnam. Ali, a Muslim, cited religious leaders' reasons for his decision to forego military service. He was born Cassius Marcellus Clay in Louisville, Kentucky in 1942 and the future three-time world champ changed his name to Muhammad Ali in 1964 after converting to Islam. He scored a gold medal at the 1960 Olympic Games in Rome and made his professional boxing debut, debut against Tani um, Husecker in October 29, 1960, winning the bout in six rounds. And then um, this is Dr. Amina Wudud um, leading um, this was a big deal. Uh, Dr. Amina Wadud, another convert to Islam. She's a professor of Islamic studies, and um, she created a big stir when, uh, and this is from the New York Times, on the day when she did this, woman leads Muslim prayer service in New York, uh, March 19, 2005. A mix of reactions from discomfort to, discomfort to elation colored the mood at the service, which was organized by a group of Muslim activists who hoped to elevate the status of women in Islam. The event drew sharp criticism from prominent cler clerics in the Middle East and has sparked a far-reaching debate. The voices of women have been silenced by centuries of man-made traditions, and we're saying no more, she said in a news conference before the service began. We're going to move from the back of the mosque to the front of the mosque. And uh, Amina Wudud is a, is a well-known um, scholar of Islam as well, particularly uh, she's written quite a bit about um, women in Muslim societies. Then um, I really admire this guy. This is Representative Keith Ellison, and he is uh, a member of Congress representing the Minneapolis area, and he's the first Muslim elected to Congress. Um, he was also, um, he had a controversial past. He, he, he went to law school in, at the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis, and that's where he embraced Islam and joined the Nation of Islam, um, but he also abandoned that organization and moved into uh, more mainstream orthodoxy, too. So this was an exciting development. This is Ilhan Omar, who uh, was elected to uh, the Minnesota uh, House of Representatives on November 8th, 2016. Uh, she's a Somali-American. Um, Minneapolis has the nation's largest community of Somalis. Um, there's thought to be around 100,000 Somali families in the Minneapolis area. Uh, does anybody know where the country's second largest Somali community is? Ilhan Omar is, she's 
giving a lot of public talks. She's um, been featured in, she was in Time Magazine. Actually, I think I took this um, photograph from Time Magazine. I think it's a, that she believed her representation could change how people see the political process. For me, this is my country, this is my future. <clears throat> for my children's future and for my grandchildren's future, to make our democracy more vibrant, more inclusive, more accessible and transparent, which is going to be useful for all of us, she said. This is a, a fascinating phenomenon. This is, um, has anyone heard of Zaituna College? Um, this is a, a, a college, I, I visited once when it was in Hayward, California, but now they've moved to a, a new campus in Berkeley, just up the street and um, they're growing and it's a um, it's an undergraduate program offering uh, a bachelor's degree really tightly focused on Islamic studies and including Arabic uh, but it's it's got a conventional sort of BA vibe to it as well and um, so it's a private school and it um, uh, really uh, is attracting a lot of particularly converts to Islam and it's it's quite a dynamic campus they have there and if you're interested Zaituna.edu was my student here at OU a, a few years ago and his relative on my other side is Islam Muhammad who is running for state representative out of Columbus and um, so he wants to represent his district uh, in the state legislature. So this is uh, an exciting development. Uh, we might have the second um, Somali um, state representative, Somali American state representative here in Ohio, which would be appropriate because uh, Columbus, as I said, has the second largest community of Somalis in the United States. And what really impressed me to expand beyond this issue of just him as a Muslim running for um, state legislature. When I went up to this campaign event um, in, a, um, in, in the middle of the district um, in, in Columbus, on Cle near, near the intersection of Cleveland Avenue and Morse Road and that um, neighborhood, which is a very um, both Somali and African American neighborhood, and the district is currently represented by a, <clears throat> a um, an African American woman, so he's going to have to compete with her in the, the Democratic primary. Then um, I guess I have to mention the um, President Trump's Muslim travel ban, and I found this picture of uh, men praying not too far from the, the White House, obviously, and. Um, as part of the, the protest against the ban. current list is uh, Syria, Iran, Yemen, Libya, Somalia, Chad, um, North Korea and Venezuela, and obviously not Muslim countries, but it's thought that uh, they threw those two in just so that it would no longer appear to be a Muslim travel ban and um, Sudan was on the list, but they took them off the list, and so it's back and forth, and the courts currently are blocking this, but um, this is a great concern to people from those countries, obviously, and trying to get relatives and friends and so forth to be able to travel back and forth, and uh, it's become one of the big hot issues um, just to make the point that we are, um, a lot of us are welcoming to everybody, and um, we think that uh, the strength of the United States lies in its, in its immigrants to a great extent. So um, let me stop there and see what conversation or questions you might have about this, about anything I've said, bearing in mind that I'm not an expert.